Peace family, it's King David here in this video. And in this video, I would like to share with you a universal insight, a revelation that fell into my spirit earlier this week. And I shared it with one friend of mine and she was just, she was just mind blown by how simple this was, how actionable it was and how good it made her feel to actually be still. She's heard these stories thousands of times and never has caught this revelation. And I don't blame her because I never caught it until I read the text myself. So in order for me to cultivate this image to share with you this simple learning, I have to reach within the text of the Holy Bible and share with you a story of Jesus walking on water. And I'm sure you heard the story already, but I don't know if you got the insight, so I gotta bring you that. So um, Jesus walking on water signifies being still in a state of disruption. Because if you think about the ocean, it's constant motion. The ocean is constant motion, so the waves are moving all the time. The wind is blowing all the time. The wind could be like the opinions of people, what people say about you and what people are being talked about. The wind, I mean, the waves could be like the news, CNNBC, NSNBC, um, Instagram, like advertisements, te television, all this stuff, shooting information at your mindset all the days, every day. But for you to be able to stand still in that and not be affected by it is by you tapping into the same power that Jesus tapped into, which lives inside of you right now. There is no separation between you and God. It's only a mental separation that could be possible. If you don't understand that God lives within you, it's because they intentionally didn't choose to teach you that. But anyway, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. Um, so I have some notes here because I wanted to make sure I got every point so I could explain this and create the best picture because it's going to come to a point in time real soon where if you're not able to assess this, you're going to actually be looking outside for someone else to give you that stillness. And um, it will be morally incorrect for me not to share this information after seeing what it did for one person okay so let's go ahead and jump right into this so i just mentioned the crazy world is like the waves and when we understand jesus being able to stand in the ocean he was not affected by the motion but why is that well the story goes like this peter saw jesus in the ocean and said yo jesus you what yo tell me to come out there bro i'm trying to walk too and then jesus like Come on, bro. The water's fine, right? And then Peter gets out of the boat and he plants his feet in the water and he's walking, but he's focused on Jesus. And in a sense, right, it's not the fact that Jesus is the reason for him to stand, right, in a sense, because Jesus is focused on the spirit. So in turn, Peter was focused on the spirit by focusing on Jesus. And we're going to get into the spirit in a second. But um, I just want to say if Jesus can walk on the water. Jesus already said in the Bible somewhere, I don't remember exactly where, but it say, and greater things you will also do. He's talking about, he does great stuff, but you're going to do greater things. So if he can walk on the water, nigga, I'm moonwalking on the water like that. Okay. And Peter can do it too. Then we all walking. You feel me? So let's get into this. All right. So, um, what made Jesus able to walk on the water? If I can share my opinion here it would be that. He had the ability to obtain stillness, standing in spirit, standing within the stillness. The Bible says in Psalms 46 that it says, be still and know. Be still and know. It didn't say be still and believe. It said, be still and know that I am God. That's exactly what it said. You can check it yourself. Okay, so I'm not sure if you know God, right? But... I would just let you know that God do things that man can't understand. God will give you some ideas to do that man can't even fathom. You get what I'm saying? So when you align yourself with God, of course, you're going to do stuff that man cannot fathom. Jesus was here in the story walking on water. Amongst other things, I just, I just think we can conclude that Jesus was a professional stiller, not, not thief. He was a professional at being still. He, he, had, a, he had a habit. He had a cultivation of energy that consistently allowed him to be still. He did miracles all over the place. He wasn't distracted by what's going on outside. He was standing in with inside and he was still, okay? Be still and know, right? So with that, I guess we can also say being still and knowing God real good is something that Jesus was real good at. But does that mean that if you become still, that you can know God real good? A lot of us believe in God, but how many of us know God? How many of us know God? Well, let's get still and find out because that's some real truth. And in knowing God real good, do you think that you can also do things that man has never fathomed before? By knowing God real good, 
by being still, do you think you also could perform things like walking on water that people have never understood, never can see, never could imagine you doing? I trust that you can. I trust that you can. So let's not forget that Jesus was the son of God, right? And Jesus was a man of his spirit. So here comes the insight, family, because Jesus being a man of his spirit tells us a lot. They don't just say, oh, spirit, ah. Because when you look into the etymology, okay, you can, you can type in on Google, spirit etymology. And the etymology is literally the derivative word or the predecessor word. For example, this, this, this is a galaxy S8, right? If, I were, if, this were, if this were to be English language spirit, the galaxy S7 would be the predecessor. So that's what etymology does. It gives you the before language understanding of the present word. So when you do this with the word spirit, it takes you to a Latin term called spiritus. And spiritus, the definition of that says breath, a breathing, or breath of God. These are different synonyms of the same word spiritus. So does that mean that the word spirit symbolizes the word breath? Let's, let's look further. So we realize one thing about the human body is that we breathe every day. I couldn't even count my breaths because I'm breathing all the time. But the system that is responsible for my breath goes by the term respiratory, okay? Now, if you look at the root word in respiratory, it's spir, S-P-I-R, which is synonymous with the same word spirit or spiritus. So the fact that my human organism breathes breath, air, right, is synonymous with the same spelling, the same word choice as a word spirit. So we know spirit is breath because we can see it. I'm sharing with you something right now. It's called inspiration. And this inspiration is going to move within your being. You won't see it, but you will feel it for sure. It might cause you to do things. It might cause you to move things, but you cannot see with your physical eyes. If I were to say, watch me breathe, how would you know if I was really breathing or not? You would only be able to know by the movement in my body. Look. Can't see nothing. That's exactly what we're talking about. Spirit is invisible. Spirit is your breath. So you have to understand this because for Jesus to be a man of his spirit is also saying that he was a man of his breath. And when you understand the power of the breath, you understand that you can actually change the way you feel just by altering the way you breathe. Let's look deeper. Just a little deeper. <laughs> so let me tell y'all right now, the universe don't make mistakes, y'all. I will say that Men observe the universe and make mistakes out of what the universe has already extracted or shown us or given us. So the respiratory system, spirit, inspiration, all speaking of things invisible as far as what drives them, okay? Breath. So does that mean that we can be more with God, that we can know God just by being still? and aligning with our breath? Can you walk on water? What? You can walk on water like that? Moonwalk for me. Let me see. Let's continue. It doesn't really matter if the water is the ocean or not. Whatever the water might be in your life, we just give thanks right now for the ability to obtain stillness because it's an ability that we all have. I'll be moonwalking on the moon in a minute, y'all. And then I'm going to come back down here and moonwalk on the ocean real quick. And then I'm going to go over there and I'm going to be, I don't know, sun walking. I don't know. But let's continue. At the end of this, I'm going to walk you through an exercise that will assist you in becoming still with your breath. So I guess that's the end of the video because we're about to get into the exercise. Um, but Jesus, if you're watching this, bro, shine on the inside one time like that. Zero. Um, but just so you know, Jesus, like, we realized we could be still in meditation, bro. So we've been doing that. And we finna meditate for the first time. Of course. All the disciples watching, let me let y'all know right now. It's past time to stop trying. Trying. Trying to get closer to God. It's about time we know God. It's about time. It's about time. It's about time we know God. It's about time. Because 
All you need to do is realize how close you already are. We so busy trying to get closer. Um, so know thyself, know God, and know that you can rearrange your world. So Jesus always observing, y'all. So Jesus, if you're observing this right now to the last minute, go ahead and share the video one time before we get into this exercise. You feel me? And also find me on Light Power on Instagram because that's where I be shining at. You feel me? Um, you also said that greater works we would also do, Jesus. So I want to let you know right now that we're not waiting on you, bro. But whenever you do come, whenever you do show up from the inside of us, you're going to find us in the stillness. For real. We're not waiting on you, bro. Take your time because we here now. We here. We're not waiting on you, bro. Boom. So let's get into the exercise, y'all. So I'm going to edit this video so that you can hear the sound now. If you have a pair of headphones, they would be extremely beneficial here because in this position, we're going to move into the process of finding stillness. All right. So the exercise, I'm going to break it down for you and then I'm going to just go ahead and start. And then you can start with me. we got about four minutes to do this exercise. So what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in. But when we breathe in, we're going to breathe in through our nostrils. And we're going to exhale through the mouth. Every time you exhale through the mouth, ensure that you exhale longer than you breathe in. So if you breathe in for four seconds, exhale for longer than that. Um, and we're going to just do this. If your mind focuses on something else, it's okay. Just bring it back. If you get distracted and you do something different and you start thinking about something, just bring your mind back gently, back to the breathing. So we're going to do this for the remainder of this video, three minutes. Let's get into it. Oh, when you breathe in, breathe in and allow for the air to fill up your lungs. Breathe in and allow your belly to poke out. Don't breathe into your chest and into your shoulders as you normally do.
gonna go ahead and leave the <sighs> I'm gonna leave the track that's played in this video in the comments in the description and I want to add this the reason for practicing stillness is not to get good at practicing stillness it's for the purpose of being able to be still by knowing how when the time is very critical so the practice of what we're doing here could be described as meditation but meditation is not for the sake of being good at meditation meditation is for the sake of being good at life what you'll notice over maybe a week of this practice, maybe once a day for 10 minutes, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening, you'll find yourself reacting less when things happen in life. You'll find yourself with more of a cushion of response time. Someone could like offend you and you could, might just pop off and snap on them and say what you feel. But over a period of time utilizing this practice, you'll be able to understand everything that you've experienced within a few seconds, maybe two seconds, and you would respond in a way of more of a loving, compassionate way. And this process might make that two seconds seem like 10 minutes of contemplation. So those two seconds of that person saying what they said, like you are, you could just snap on a regular day. But with this, you might have the ability to say, they, they talking to themselves. They not seeing me. They're projecting them into me. And you wouldn't even be bothered by it. But this comes with the discipline. This comes with the repetition. Either way, family, I'm deeply grateful to share this with you. If you found this video to be interesting, to be enlightening, to be encouraging, to be inspiring, hit that love and subscribe button. Just hit that button. Because that's all I find to share is what's good. Like that. That's the stillness. That's the stillness. Nah, this is stillness. Either way, family, if you have any comments or anything to add to this, any value to add to this, please, 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 please drop a comment down below. Or send me a DM on Instagram at Light Power. You can also find us on YouTube at Light Power. Um, because I would love some more insight. I'm sure that you have something over there that's more remarkable treasure that has been treasure for you. And I'm sure it'd be treasure for us too. So we're going to continue to shine like a thousand suns. And if anybody want the light, hand them some sunglasses, you know, one time and continue to shine. But with that being said, you're just going to have to find me in the stillness. Peace.